Coming up next, Frank and Mary in Framingham with your hosts, Grace O'Donnell and me, Arthur Bergeron. Our guest today, Sean Luz, award-winning sustainability coordinator for the city of Framingham. Stay tuned. Hi, welcome to this episode of Frank and Mary in Framingham. We're glad you've joined us. I'm Grace O'Donnell, Director of Elder Services at the Callahan Center. And I'm Art Bergeron. My day job is as an elder law attorney at uh, Myrick O'Connell. We're a big firm, there are 70 of us. Everybody gets to do what they like. I like doing elder law. Um, but this show is not about elder law, it's about my friends Frank and Mary. If you've seen any of my presentations, um, uh, on cable or otherwise, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's if they live in Framingham, they want to stay right here. They don't want to move someplace else. So the question really then is, if you're like Frank and Mary, what can you do in order to stay right where you are? You don't want to move. And so what we do on this show is we try to invite guests who can help you figure out the people you need to know and the programs you need to know about. So you can do exactly that, stay right here in Framingham. With me is my good friend, Grace O'Donnell, who, with whom we've been doing this show for a long time now. And she, because she's been running the Callahan Center for so long, knows everybody, it seems. And so she finds these great guests. So whom do we have today, Grace? Hi, Arthur. I'm really excited to introduce you and our audience to Sean Luz. Sean is here today to speak about our city's energy initiatives, as well as Mass Save and related energy assistance programs that help residents improve their energy efficiency and help with the rising utility costs. So Sean, what can you tell us first about your role as the sustainability coordinator for Framingham? What does that mean to the rest of the city? Well, firstly, thank you so much for having me. It's, a, it's an honor to be on the program. Um, yeah, as the sustainability coordinator for the for the city, um, I work on a number of different projects um, across the community. Um, you know, a lot of my work is involved with energy efficiency projects throughout our municipal buildings. Um, so it could be things like HVAC upgrades. Um, we've done some refrigeration projects with the school department to increase the efficiency of, of kitchen equipment there. Um, we've also done a lot of work uh, uh, with community engagement. Um, mm. So for instance, uh, we're, we're working with our neighboring towns uh, and cities, um, specifically the towns of Ashland and the towns of Natick um, on a uh, climate equity project. And just learning about how climate change is impacting all the different neighborhoods in, in our communities and, and how we can support them to mm -hmm. deal with those types of changes. I imagine some of those impacts are things like rivers over flooding. Framingham has so many little ponds and rivers and some of the surrounding communities do as well. I imagine that's one of the concerns that people have. Yeah, no, that's, that's an excellent point. So that's definitely one of the major climate hazards Framingham faces. Um, I think another key one that we're really looking at is extreme heat. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think as the years go by, we're gonna see hotter and hotter weather. And especially for um, you know, our residents that live in areas of the community that maybe have more pavement, mm -hmm. uh, less green, what we call green infrastructure to help absorb some of that heat, um, you know, that can present problems, especially mm -hmm. if they don't have you know, air conditioning or um, are good insulation in their home. Right, right. Yeah, so this is a huge thing. I mean, it is. It, it, you've been doing this for a while now, but so first of all, your award-winning what did you? What award did you win? Uh, so I was awarded uh, the Leading by Example uh, Award from uh, the Commonwealth. Uh, yeah. I believe it was the Department of Energy Resources. Um, oh, that's great. Yeah, and honestly, it, it really is. Thank you. It's it's. Uh, I consider it a team award. Um, I'm so thankful to be working with. I mean, there's there's so many amazing people that work for the city. Grace included. Um, just the amazing programs that are going on that people don't consider maybe a sustainability. Yeah. There's so much that fits within the the sustainability umbrella. Mm. So I just want to recognize that and the fact that you know these programs won't be possible without working with so many other colleagues that work for the city. So mm -hmm. right. So so and so just as a curiosity, where when you came, kind of were you the first sustainability coordinator? I was. Yes. And where like where do you? Start? Start and, and kind of where are you on that? 
I don't, I don't, I, you, I, you may have some other side, I was just curious, you know, kind of like, and from your own perspective now, you've been doing this for a while, kind of where are you and where is Framingham on that journey? Great question. Um, so uh, coming into this role, I was previously an energy manager. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of my focus so far has been on energy. It is one of the biggest ways that we can reduce our emissions. And I think it's something that people are dealing with, especially now with rising energy costs. So um, a, lot of, a lot of area there. Um, I think we've made a lot of progress, particularly, you know, in these, these last couple of years. Um, you may have heard about some of the projects like the Eversource Geothermal Pilot Project. Mm -hmm. It's going to bring efficient, clean heating and cooling to a neighborhood in Framingham. Uh, it's right next to neighbor Normandy Road and Concord Street. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're working on a mass safe program to help educate residents about all the different opportunities that are available. And uh, we're also going to be launching our climate action plan which is a process we want all members of the community, um, including our senior residents, to, to participate in because I think there's something that everybody can benefit from and we, we want to hear from all perspectives about how you know, climate change is impacting them and how we can support people um, in meeting our climate goals. Uh, and I imagine a big part of that also is not only hearing from people, but educating people who mm -hmm. may uh, not be as tuned in to what's going on with climate change or maybe are still skeptical about some of the things that they have heard. So I'm glad that you're taking the lead on that and making sure that people are getting accurate information and also so that they don't feel like it's crashing down on them, that there are actual steps that people can take, practical changes that they can make to make a difference. That, that's an excellent point. I mean, one of the things that we've really thought about going into this process is, um, you know, the community engagement is going to be a huge part of this. And I was so thankful to have recently a conversation with Grace about that and kind of planning with that. We've been talking with different departments and, and just getting feedback on our approach. Um, I think, you know, the key thing for us is not to create a list of actions that are, these are good things that, you know, you should probably do. We want to create a list of actions that has been vetted by the community and they have Framingham context built into them. These are things that we need to do that make sense for our community, not just you know, a wish list of things that would be great to have. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's maybe like a framing, a, a careful framing for how we wanna approach this. Uh, but yeah, yeah, you're right. Education is a huge part of that. Yeah. Um, and I think people are starting to see the impacts of climate change already. It's, it's already here and um, so part of it is preparing for the future, but also you know, there are things that we can be doing now that will benefit us now it's not, I think sometimes people think of sustainability as what do we take away now so we have it left in the future? Mm -hmm. But I, the way I look at it, I think there are so many initiatives and actions we can take now that will have benefit for mm -hmm. us go, also going into the future and, you know, including now. So um, I, I think that's an important way to look at it. And yeah. Your, your mention of the Mass Save programs is a perfect example of that where people can get better insulation in their homes, mm. and that can start to benefit them now, both keeping them warmer in the winter with less expense and cooler in the summer with less cost of running an air conditioner or fans. And you know, if, if they follow through with having that mass save audit done, it can reveal some ways that they can start to save. And who doesn't want to save with what the cost of energy is going on right now? Yes, yeah, and I think there's, there's so many benefits to, to projects like that. Insulation is one of the biggest things we're really trying to promote right now. Mm -hmm. um, it's something people don't normally think about. They might go straight to their heating system and say, oh, you know, we have an older heating system. It should be updated. Let's get something more efficient. Um, looking at insulation first, as they would do through a home energy assessment, is a really important thing because what it does is, um, of course, it provides that energy efficiency benefit. Uh, but I just had a family member. They had no insulation in their home. Wow. They recently signed up for... Um, a mass save home energy assessment. And before they had their insulation done, I remember you could hear conversations from like two houses. It, it was just <laughs> insane, like the amount of noise that you could hear around the house. After they had it done, I mean, you could still hear, you know, street, street traffic. It wasn't like they were complete, completely closed off, but now it felt like you were in, you know, a home space. It wasn't kind of just open to the entire environment. Right. That's, so there's. That's a great, that's a great example. You know? Yeah. And, I, and by the way, so my wife and I did this. You know, we actually did the mass safe, mm -hmm. and we live in a big, like 1890s Victorian. And, and once again, we were kind of, we, we, we did it not knowing what suggestions would be made. Of course, that was the first one. The, and, and the notion that through the mass safe program, not only do they come out to check whether you need the insulation, they help you pay for the insulation. Yeah. I, 
it, it, literally, I was like, who knew? How can this be that I didn't know this? You know, and, and it's such, it comes as such a surprise to people, yeah. right? Yeah. They have just no idea. It can be challenging too. There's a lot of different programs out there and they update all the time. So with Mass Save, uh, their program, uh, I believe it's by state law, it'll update every three years. Mm -hmm. The utilities have to submit a plan to the state that approves what the energy efficiency programs will look like. In this recent round, which started uh, the beginning of 2022, um, they added a lot more incentives for insulation. Mm -hmm. And so now you get 75 to 100% off right. insulation that's costs. Right. So if, Isn't that that's astonishing? Great. Yeah. That's great. It, people would never guess this. Yeah. And, and I know for a lot of, I always take things from the senior perspective, a lot of folks have lived in their homes a long time. It may be a long time since they had fresh insulation put in. And I think people don't realize over time, insulation loses its R value. Mm -hmm. And so it's a good idea to replace it um, yeah. after a certain amount of time. And it's, it's at no cost to have the home energy assessment. You can get one every two years. There's really no downside. Uh, there's, there's also no obligation for you to, you know, for residents to move forward with actions from it. Mm -hmm. So we, we really recommend it. And um, just also to that point too, I think when you are doing your insulation, it allows you potentially to go with a smaller HVAC system. Yeah. So on that side of things, if you're able to get 75, 100% off of insulation, you might be able to downsize your HVAC system mm -hmm. and now you're saving money there too. Right, and if you want to do an HVAC system, as long as it's correctly rated, you get a big deduction on the cost of the HVAC system. Yes. And, and we're still, we did this several years ago, we're still, that was also the last time we bought a light bulb. <laughs> because as part of the package, yeah. you got this like, it, it was like this care package in the middle, this huge box, and it had a ton of light bulbs. It, it had the, it, uh, several other things. Mm -hmm. But the striking thing was the light bulbs. There were all these efficient light bulbs, so they like never burn out, right? Mm -hmm. So now every time you're replacing one, you're replacing with one of these, I'll be dead before one of these bulbs burns out, <laughs> right? It's, 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 and, it, and once again, the, the effect, the, the, so the effect on your energy bill mm -hmm. You don't, you don't realize how much of your energy bill is about lighting up your house. It's mm -hmm. just wonderful. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can definitely have quality improvements, too. I mean, um, we recently did an energy efficiency program for small businesses, and some of the small businesses we visited had missing fixtures, like, in their ceilings. And ah. so we were able to give them that benefit. It was just night and day to see that, that kind of change. And it, obviously on a residential basis, too, like, it's, it's, it's a great, great huge, offer. Huge. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I can imagine one of the questions people might have is how long does that mass save energy audit typically take? Um, you yeah, know that. that's a great question. I think, you know, it'll definitely depend on the size of the home. Um, I, it, it's no more than a day process for them to come in. Um, if there's something specialized that they need to look at, they may want to schedule like a separate visit. But um, really, I think the, the nice thing about the mass save audits is you can, you know, you schedule your time in advance, you know when it is up front. Um, and in addition to that, um, you're going to get a report after the assessment is done that'll kind of outline what are the high level uh, solutions, opportunities that you can, uh, you know, do for your home. Mm. Um, if, if there is a, for instance, with insulation, that may require a return visit, they could do some testing on your home to determine what's the leakage. Mm. They'll actually be able to see how leaky your home is and how much of a difference insulation and also air sealing is mm. a kind of a combined measure. How, how much of an impact those will have. And what's great is they'll do a measurement after that will then show you with these improvements how m much more energy efficient your home is. Yeah. And therefore how much you save. Yeah. How much yes. you save ultimately, right? Yeah. Yep. No, it's, it's, it's a really great program. And I think, you know, that's, that's one of the main reasons, even before, um, you know, what's happened with energy prices recently, you know, we really wanted to get the word out because rather than reinventing the wheel, this is a program that's already available. And I think a lot of the battle right now is just making sure people are aware that it's out there, what types of opportunities are there, um, and that you know we're available. The senior center is, of course, available to, to help seniors. And, and just generally, I think we, we're, we're really combining our, our efforts to make sure these resources are accessible to, to all residents. But so. I suppose, especially hitting seniors, I mean, you talk about the group that's mo the most likely to be living in an old house. Yeah is an old person right, who's been living in that house for a long time. And, and you know, once again, it can be an 1890s house or it can be a 1950s house because no one was conscious of this stuff. Right, yeah. But yeah. you just, you know, you put up the walls, insulation, what's that, you know? Mm -hmm. So it, it it's, affects a lot of our folks, right? right? Yeah. yeah. 
I know one of the things that the staff at the Callahan Center tries to help people with is applying for LIHEAP, the mm -hmm. Low Income Heat Energy Assistance mm -hmm. Program. And I think a lot of people don't realize that they may be eligible for it. I know for a one-person household, as long as your gross income is in the range of $42,411, you could apply for this. It won't pay your heating costs for the entire season, but it may give you a month's worth of oil or gas or electric, however you heat your home. And for an individual, a one-person household, that gross income ends up being about $3,534 a month. For a couple, uh, they can earn $55,461 per year or $4,261 per month. And so there are a lot of people who could be eligible for this and they don't take advantage of it. Uh, I believe the amounts that are available typically range between $355 and $600 when you apply for this. But to me, that's some sort of savings that can help. And often when our staff meet with somebody who is struggling to pay a utility bill, they can check with them and find out, well, you might be eligible for even some other programs and the staff can help them with that application process. So we like to encourage people to um, seek out what's available to them. And if you don't even know, just give our Council on Aging Department a call and we can fill you in and we can help you fill out the applications too. Yeah, and I think, you know, there's there's the LIHEAP program, there's Mass Save. I think the service that, that the Callahan Senior Center offers in itself is so critical because mm -hmm. one of the things we've been trying to do is link these programs together. Yeah. Um, it's It can be challenging, even, even as someone that's working on, you know, trying to figure out how these programs can, can fit together. For instance, with LIHEAP, as you mentioned, you know, Eversource has a separate discount rate for utility costs. Mm -hmm. So those aren't exclusive. You could be on LIHEAP and also benefit from discounted rates from Eversource. And those income thresholds, the guidance that they provide, it's often very similar. Right. Um, and so like making those connections, which your staff have been so uh, proficient at doing, like yeah. that, that's such an important tool for the community. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's important for people to know what's available to them. We have a lot of community resources, resources from the state and even the federal government, but a lot of times people just don't realize what they can tap into. And that's what we're here for, is to help them become aware of that and to make use of them. And that's the key, the key is that m most people, by the way, me included, wouldn't be aware of a lot of those income criteria. As you were just explaining those numbers, yeah. I had always heard of that program before, mm -hmm. never knew what the income criteria were, yeah. assumed that the income criteria were about 50% of what you just said. Wow, wow. So, right? that, so, the, that's so there's the a huge, that applies to, I mean, because who is the, the standard senior, right, it, it, it is asset rich and income poor, mm -hmm. right? So he's got, they got their house, they've killed themselves, they paid the mortgage, you know, maybe they've got an, you know, a, a, a small IRA 401k, but many people, they're just living on their pension, mm -hmm. especially if they're public employees. Mm -hmm. So they don't have a lot of accumulated savings, but they're you know the, but they would be ideal. All these folks would be ideal candidates for a lot of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think you know, um, uh, like was mentioned, I, I think another important connection too is if you qualify for LIHEAP, you also qualify for enhanced energy efficiency incentives. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times that uh, these energy efficiency improvements we're talking about, whether it's insulation, even appliances. Um, that can potentially be covered 100%. And that's mm. I know that's something your team works on as well. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah it's, it's just important that people know about it. And um, I, I think the other thing too is, um, uh, there was another program I was gonna highlight, trying to keep everything together. But um, that's okay. But, but that's okay, that's right. That's right, that, this will be an excuse for you to come back to another show. That's right. right. Well, I, I am so amazed how you're able to bring out all those numbers for the program. In my head, I, I had it in the back of my head, I'm like, oh man, I forget what the value is <laughs> um, Well, I, I wouldn't be able to give you details of larger households, but most of the folks that we encounter are either a single individual right. or a husband and wife or, or um, a couple or you know a, a parent and an adult child. But if 
people want to know what the gross income limits would be for larger households, all they have to do is contact us at the Callahan Center and we'd be happy to give that additional information to them. And like I say, our staff will give them all the details about the different kinds of forms they would need to fill out, the proof that we would need, and they'll t you know, take them, guide them through that whole process. No, that's great. That's, that's the most important thing. Uh, back in January, we had uh, an energy assistance fair um, for, for residents, um, and it was really just geared at, you know, we, we sent some targeted mailers to parts of our community, um, identify as lower income. We did some, some general announcements, and um, we had, you know, a pretty good turnout. We're really excited that we were able to help residents, and it was, it was very interesting to see. Um, you know, we had uh, translation resources available and it was just great to see people coming in and kind of thinking like, oh, I hope someone will be able to help or, you know, be able to walk me through this and seeing that, that those resources were there, um, you know, they were going table to table picking up, you know, like, oh, I didn't know that this was a program. I didn't know that this existed. Yeah, um, you know, even, even with, um, you know, we had, uh, there was a community solar offering there, which is right. another interesting program. Um, there's many community solar providers out there and, um, you know, often they can provide bill discounts mm -hmm. without requiring you to install solar panels on your home. Um, that can be a challenge for, for a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's definitely things to look out for in those types of, those types of programs. Um, but, uh, you know, you may find opportunities where, you know, you get a monthly discount on your bill. There's no cancellation fees. You're able to exit any time. Um, you know, so we're hoping to provide a resource for that, um, you know, later in March, um, but uh, late March, but... Uh, Terrific. Yeah. I, I think people would really enjoy learning more about that, um, which, because I know for certain people, different types of solar options work better for them. So I think providing that kind of guidance would be very helpful for people. Yeah, yeah. And and also, I mean, the other thing we've been doing, too, we, we want to give uh, residents guidance on, you know, if they are interested in installing renewable energy options. Um, uh, early in 2022, uh, it started in late 2021. I'm trying to piece together timelines. We were talking at the beginning of the show how it's, you know, the world is like pre-COVID and, and yes. post-COVID. And like what happened in there? There's this kind of hole, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. It, it, so uh, during that time period around there, um, we had a... Uh, a regional project where we were offering, um, we worked with some vendors for solar, for heat pumps, which is another clean energy technology mm -hmm. that I think um, many people might be hearing about now. Uh, but basically we offered a program where residents could sign up for a clean energy assessment, uh, specifically for those technologies, and then they could get you know, uh, no cost quotes to install them at you know, a discounted rate. And so that program has since ended, but of course, we're always looking for ways to support our residents and provide resources about these types of opportunities are out there. Mm. They might not necessarily be the focus of like a mass save home energy assessment. Those are much geared towards, you know, energy efficiency measures like, you know, uh, maybe maybe simpler upgrades to your HVAC system, insulation, that type of thing. Um, but those other opportunities are out there. Mm. Um, okay. And there's rebates for those as well that have in recent years really climbed. Oh. In fact, based on income guidelines, you could get up to, if you're doing like a whole home heat pump system, mm -hmm. um, you could get up to, it's, it's around ten to $30,000. So it really depends on the size of the system. Oh. There are very significant uh, uh, rebates and incentives available. Oh, that's good because that's always been the disincentive to, to, the, to those systems. They save you just a boatload of money. And so over time, once again, I, so I, I know this from having talked to these folks and who was talking in Westboro, that you, know, you can do the projection and show that over time you really are saving a ton of money, except that it's always the upfront cost. Mm -hmm. And if you're a senior and you're, and you're always kind of in the back of your mind saying, so this is the money I have to live on till I die, you know, do I really want to write this big check, right? Yeah. So to be able, so, and that's the disincentive. They'd be scared about that. So to know that they have that, that they should at least consider it. I guess that's so much of the issue mm. is when you talk to people about this stuff and you say, you know, if you just talk to somebody about it, it doesn't mean you buy it. Right. Right. Just talk, you know, talk to somebody and then do the math yourself. Or in the case of the folks at the Callahan Center, let them do the math. Yeah. Right. And then you can decide, does, you know, does this make sense for me? Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's it's uh, one of the challenges uh, statewide. If you look at the state's climate action plan. Um, you know, one of the challenging things is knowing when to look at those types of replacements. A lot of times it's, oh, my heating system broke. 
Time to replace it. Well, we have an emergency. We got to switch it out with the same equipment. Right now. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. So that's that's. That's right. Yeah. yeah the, intru- the the adjuster shows up or whatever. Is oh, sorry. Right. Yeah. We only have a couple of minutes left, Sean. Is there any other piece of what you were working on that you want to make sure to inform people about? Sure. That's a great point. I, I think um, for for our senior citizens, the first. Uh, resource that I would definitely advocate you reach out to first is of course the Callahan Senior Center. Um, I think that you have that connection to so many different programs that are specifically energy related but then there's also some that are somewhat related and you got to piece them all together. Mm -hmm. So I think you guys do such an amazing job at that. Um, So I would say that and the the other thing I would say is um, on Framingham's website for maybe other resources that might be outside of that or just if you're wondering what else is out there um, uh, I would uh, just encourage residents to visit framinghamma.gov slash save energy. Save energy. Um, so that is a kind of a landing page where we're hoping to host resources and just update it over time as more and more information comes out. Um, and I think one of the first updates that we got to do is make sure that we're appropriately linking to all the amazing services that you know are offered through the, the senior center and just making sure when people visit it, it's like, hey, here are all these programs, but also if you call the Senior Center, you can get access, you know, they can help you kind of visit each of these. Yeah. Right. That's great. I'm, I'm glad to hear that the, the link is an easy one to remember because sometimes people can get lost on a, on a website trying to find their way, but the framinghamma.gov, save energy. Great. I get myself in trouble sometimes where I remember one time I provided a link that didn't exist. So right after a program <laughs> we did, I had to run and tell our, our webmaster, please, please. Please put this <laughs> right away. Right yeah. away. Make so, it so. <laughs> John, this has just been terrific. Yeah. Right? I think there's just a ton of information. Grace, yet again, another home run regarding the guests that we bring on. Mm-hmm. Folks, you, once again, this isn't costing you anything. Go check this out and, and use the Callahan Center if you want as your window to check this out. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing Sean at some point in the future, I hope, on the, yes. on the show. And thank you so much for watching uh, this episode of Frank and Mary here in Framingham. Thank you very much.